Hi, it's Martin and Arlo, and we're back at home today. Arlo's out of school, Anthem's out of school, and we're gonna make some sourdough crackers. This cracker is made with, or the recipe calls for white whole wheat flour, right? White whole wheat. Um, I'm out of white whole wheat, and so I'm going to use regular red whole wheat, hard red winter wheat. Functionally, the two flours are pretty much exactly the same. It's just the pigment uh, that will be missing out, so no big deal. So I have uh, the whole wheat here, and I also have some salt. If you wanted to substitute in some other whole grain flour like spelt or rye or, boy, anything, you could even use some buckwheat. Uh, crackers are very flexible and so you can make that substitution. Now in the recipe it calls for a couple tablespoons of dried herbs and we have some dried thyme but I don't have a lot else that's dried right now so but I do have some really good dried spices and so I'm going to use one tablespoon of harissa which we like and this harissa is a blend of different chilies and cumin and uh, we have a nice Turkish uh, spice shop downtown and the spices are really good and so just to make sure that that's really well distributed I'm going to add it with the dry ingredients right at the beginning and make sure that it's in there you could use so many different things uh, dried herbs is a pretty general or dried spices is a pretty general direction um, you could even use uh, dried cheese I mean there's so many options Maybe dried rosemary would be good. Okay, uh, and the next thing that's gonna go in is some butter. It just says room temp on the recipe and mine went a little bit further and actually is kind of melted, but it doesn't really matter. And there's that. I'm just gonna get the butter in a little bit. I found that if I add them, the ingredients in this order is a little easier for me. Maybe it's not necessary, but if I add the butter in like this, I will get a more tender cracker because I'll coat the flour with fat, which keeps it from developing strength. In the same way that when we make pie crust, we add dry ingredients, we add the butter to the dry ingredients, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit spicy. That harissa has got a little bit of a kick to it. It does. It's really nice though. I was eating them. That was the first thing I ate today was harissa, leftover harissa <laughs> crackers. So, I don't know. It's not, every, not a breakfast that everybody's going to get excited about, right? <laughs> yeah, you could say so. Then I moved on to my toast and coffee course though. Okay. So the sourdough culture goes in. Now, the sourdough culture that is in here is the only source of moisture really in the cracker, right? Mm -hmm. Sourdough culture is a mixture of flour and water, in this case, in equal parts. And so this 227 grams of culture has, uh, you know, half that amount in water. And so that's where all the water for this recipe is coming from. Um, you can use discard for this if you are uh, maintaining a sourdough culture and you have some discard. That's what this was written for. Um, if you don't have that much discard though, what you can do is the day prior, just make yourself uh, a little bit extra sourdough culture. So like I said, this culture is equal parts flour and water, which means that it's about, uh, what, 227 grams divided by two is like 113, 114. So it has about that quantity of flour and water in it. If you don't have sourdough culture and you wanna make these crackers, which are really good, uh, and there are other cracker recipes on the website, so don't feel like you have to make this one, but if you really wanna try this one, particular one, what you can do is you could make a poolish too. You could add 113 grams of water and 113 grams of flour, uh, and a pretty good pinch of yeast and then let that ripen overnight. I will say that like when you add um, more flavors to this, it uh, you lose 
some of the flavor of the sourdough. Like the simpler you keep the flavors, the more you're gonna keep the flavor of the sourdough. What should I add now? So what is that? That's a good question. Yes. Um, I wanted some additional flavor in there. So what I add, what I had was, so chives are in season, right? Uh -huh. At uh, Chuck's farm right now. Yeah. And uh, this farm that we get our veg from has pick your own herbs. And so we did some pick your own chives and I just took the blossoms and I've been adding them in because they, they add like a little bit of a garlicky onion kick. Oh man, I'm excited. Come over here and look at them. That's cool. So it's just chive blossoms. And I'm just gonna fold them in and just knead it real briefly. I'm not trying to, you don't wanna develop a lot of strength with this uh, because you want it to be tender, right? Yep. Okay. I'm excited to try this Those with the are chives. Good. Yeah, super good with the chives right there. Okay, so now that I have that in there, what I will do is, um, we're gonna chill the dough. It should really be dead cold before you work with it again. Um, and so what I do is I just put it in the fridge or if I want them sooner than that, I put them in the freezer. And I'm gonna roll these into rectangles. After they're chilled and before I bake them, I'm gonna roll them into rectangles, right? Uh, we're gonna roll them into these big sheets, which we're gonna yep. demo in just a second. It's easier to do a rectangle if you already have a rectangle. And so what I like to do, and I do this with pie dough too. If I want a round pie, I, I make the round, the dough round before I chill it, right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes it a little easier. So. I just put it on parchment. You can put it inside plastic wrap, whatever you want. And I want to bake these sooner rather than later, so will you put them on the top shelf in the freezer for me? Okay. Oh, you do. There is my rectangular cracker. I'll let this warm up a little bit. It would be better if it was still a little bit cooler. It feels a little bit soft, right? Yeah. You wanna roll some? Sure, I'm not great at rolling, but. It's okay. I'll show you a trick. Okay. And then I'm gonna let you take over, at least for a minute. <laughs> um, do you see how it's pretty rectangular right now? Yep. Yeah, actually I think. So, if you just press it yeah. in lines like that, you kinda of keep it square, and then I keep it like this too. Uh, and I make sure that it has a little bit of flour on either side. If it has a little bit of flour, it'll continue to sort of float on the surface and it works yep. a little bit easier. Okay. So just go that way. So just roll in one direction and then we'll turn Wait, them so sideways. We're go like this or just actually so roll? actually roll, yep. You can, press, you can press pretty hard. And if you see it getting kind of weirdly shaped, you know, like maybe so it's getting round, then you can just turn it. Like that. And we're going for about a nine by 13 or a little bit more. So we want it to be about as thick as a tortilla shell. That's what I found. And you can press on it. Yeah, that's, that's, it's good that you're being mindful of that, but you can like press on it a little bit more. See, I did that and then come okay. back here and hold it down okay. like that. Now I think that's about 13. So let's go on this axis. Are, so it's going and to be if you, 13 by 13? Yeah, 9 by 13. Okay. And if you feel like, see that's getting a little round right there? Yeah. Well, you can come here, you can come here and just put pressure right there and put, go right, and just aim it right towards the corner. Do you see how that squared it out? Yeah, Watch cool. this. So I'm just taking the end of the pin and I just roll toward the corner. And do you see how it's immediately almost like back into shape? Yeah. Let's cool. see, maybe a little bit of flour. Go. We want that to be about nine. So this is going to be pretty thin. Yeah, it's going to be thin. Thin like a tortilla shell. All right. So then you're going to go like this and then you go like Yeah, that. perfect. Yeah, it's not super important. It doesn't really matter, but you're, you're looking good there. And I think that's about, I think we're pretty close. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, nine, just a little bit more, but you're a little over there. Okay, you know what? I think you're good. So now, what we'll do is um, we'll transfer it over to the sheet tray. No, you're okay. You're okay. If it's a little long, it's okay because it looks like because the thickness 
The thickness feels right. Okay. Looks good. Okay. And then just gently transfer it. Okay. That. You know, you can prick these with a fork. I haven't been. I just haven't felt like they've been crazy bubbly or anything. If you're having problems with bubbling or if you want to sort of make sure that that doesn't happen, you can prick them with a fork. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah, so go over them with a, the yep. kinds of a fork. Okay, you can cut these any way you want. Um, I usually do like a parallelogram. Is that right? Yeah, parallelogram. I think that's... You do more than I would. I don't know about that. We should yeah. ask Anthem. She took geometry this year. Is that a parallelogram? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. I think it is. See how I'm cutting those? Yep. And you can cut them any size. You can make squares. You do whatever you want. Um, and we'll brush them. Will you grab that uh, salt off that tray? Over there, right over here on the piano bench that I get to sit at. This would have been better if I had brushed them before because they wouldn't move, but it'll be okay. A little bit of olive oil helps the salt stick and it also helps them brown. And it doesn't hurt the flavor. A little bit of olive oil. Okay, you wanna sprinkle some salt around there? Use your, yeah, sprinkle it into your hand and then pinch it out. Yeah, exactly. There we go. And I'm gonna hit it with some pepper. Okay. So we're going to get these into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And what I've been doing is I've been turning the oven off at 20 minutes and then letting them coast for about uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Just let them hang out in the oven because you really want them to be crispy. Um, if you're having problems and your crackers aren't as crispy as you want, make sure that you're rolling them nice and thinly. So this batch makes two sheet trays like this, right? You saw me divide it into two yep. pieces, right? We've only rolled one dough. So the batch size um, makes two like nine by 13 um, uh, sheets of crackers. So make sure you roll them thinly enough and make sure you bake them long enough. And I, my little method is to turn the off into, oven off at 20 minutes and then just let the oven cool and let the crackers cool and dry out some more. Okay, so you get those in and we'll get set up to have some delicious lunch in a moment. Just put them on the bottom tray, would you? On the bottom rack. There you go. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Go. It's flat. You're good. No problem. All is well. Okay. So the crackers are out of the oven and they've cooled a little bit and we're ready to have some lunch. Are you ready for lunch? Oh yeah, I'm really hungry. Cheers, okay. So, um, yeah, they look good. They're snappy. Um, and so we've got lunch. We've got some beet hummus and we've got some roasted broccoli, some good Vermont cheese, we've got some lettuce, and I think I'm gonna make a wrap and then have a cracker on the side. You ready? Maybe we'll just try a cracker and then we'll make our lunch. We won't eat in front of everybody. And try it. Cheers. That was easy, right? Mmm, mmm, it's so tender. Really flaky and crunchy. Super flaky. Mmm. I want to try them next and sub in olive oil for butter. Yeah. And see how that would work or some other kind of fat. Anyway, so. I would put some beet hummus on mine. Beet hummus. So, thanks for joining us. Sourdough crackers. Super easy, um, it's a great way to use up your sourdough discard, it's a great way to get some whole grains, some flavorful whole grains, and to incorporate them into a nice little lunch with a lot of fresh veg. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Anthem. Mm, you go be hummus. Good hummus, huh?